What's up coaches, man? Happy Friday. Uh, coach Brisson back here, double wing coach, um, to do some more double wing content for you today. So today, I figure a lot of my coaches out there are in um, full swing with their seasons and they are probably in the phase of installing plays. So I get a lot of emails, um, a lot of people that are using my manual and using my um, my coaching materials that, uh, that I retail pretty much through my YouTube page. Um, and I get a lot of emails on coach, how do you install plays? And I do have a procedure for installing plays. I mean, usually it's the reason I don't do like practice plans for coaches and kind of stuff like that is because I kind of feel that like, um, it's really talent dependent and it's really like how your like team is makeup is I like, I can't be there to see your team and see the, like the levels of their talent and how quickly they pick up, pick up on stuff. But I have a basically general plan that I follow um, my a procedure when it comes to installing plays. So I figured that now would be a great time to do that. And I also wanted to talk about a little bit of um, the stuff you saw in the intro video that I refer to as three kings. I don't ever refer to that in any of that, like any of my coaching materials. And the reason is, is because um, it's just like a coaching nuance, a thing I've done for, um, I mean, pretty much for 13 years since I started working with this offense like full time. So it's the first time it will be released the three kings uh drill and just the three kings philosophy of um how i get this offense to work so before i get into that i am going to do some whiteboard stuff today but before i get into that i'll just discuss basically um my procedure for installing plays so first of all before i install plays obviously the kids need to be able to huddle i have a specific huddle that i spell out in my manual how i like the huddle to be organized i recommend coaches follow that simply because uh when you you break and you run to the ball, the kids are aligned exactly like they're going to be when they uh, when they break the huddle and run to the ball. They're already kind of like sorted out. Um, so one thing I go over before I install plays is alignment and recess. So my kids are all foot to foot. I've had coaches ask me about running the double wing with splits, and I'm like, absolutely not. The only time you should have any splits is in between your guards and your center. And if they don't need to, it's even better. But if they if they must, like if you're UC double wing and your quarterback is in under center and he's just got like he's literally the guards are on top of him because he's he's under center and your entire line is recessed. So I'll talk about that. I'll talk about recess in a minute because uh, it's an important topic. So if you have to have splits, your guards and splits can go about, I mean, six to eight inches max. OK, but everyone else is foot to foot. The double wing is does not have splits because it's designed to allow your kids to pull to the point of attack and get there in the amount of time that you're given for a running back to get the toss and hit the hole. It's not a lot of time. Like it has to hit fast. Like the double wing is not a slow offense. It's designed, you come out, you go into motion, you snap the ball and you're running. Like um, if you guys are getting caught in the backfield, like you need to look at a couple things about timing. Um, and, and recess has a lot to do with that. So my procedure on recess is putting my guards toes about mm, i say about four inches behind the center's heels okay and then they're a little bit outside of that because you, you can give them like a six to eight inch split okay that means that when your guards through your tight ends line up they all have to be foot to foot and straight when they go into their three-point stance their face mask needs to break the plane of the center. But if you look at any of my videos, my center is way out in front, okay? I also make my centers put the ball way out in front of them. You'll notice they're not like like on top of the ball, crowding the ball. They have the ball way out in front of them. I, I have my snappers, uh, a lot of my snappers under center. I make them snap two-handed. Like they literally hold the ball like this and they snap two-handed between their legs. Um, just because it's faster. But I put the ball all the way out in front because the defense cannot cross that line. And I want the defense as far back as possible, okay? So when I install plays, I have an alignment before assignment mentality. Their alignment has to be right and on point long before I start getting into running plays. If they can't line up right, then they, they have no business running a play. So we go over alignment way before we go over assignment. So that's the first thing today. Now, as far as the order... Power goes in first, always. Base powers, no tags. If you're UC, that's Ray 34 power. If you are gun, that is gun 34 power. Or you do both, whatever. But gun 34 power and Ray 34 power have to go. 
Um, again, base powers, no tags. Tags come later. The order after that, once power right, 34 power and 25 power are both going, I will put in counter. Then we will spend usually like half a practice, if not the entire practice on wedge, because I'm a big wedge guy. Then I'll go over trap and sweep. Usually the same day I try to teach those concept concepts. And then after that, pass. Um, so power first, counter, wedge, trap and sweep, then pass. Um, now, how do I get to installing plays? The preseason for me is a big deal because my process of installing plays is like Steve Kalande's uh, process that he uh, learned me a long time ago, which was chalk it, talk it, walk it, jog it, run it. Chalk it, talk it, walk it, jog it, run it. So the chalking it and the talking it can a lot of times happen in preseason meetings. If you have meetings with your kids and you just want to go over the offense, I tend to, if I take a team over, I tend to show them video, like video you see of my offense. I show that to show that to them. Then we go over the base plays and I bring a whiteboard and I chalk it in front of them. And then we talk it. We talk individual responsibilities of like what each kid is doing on the play. And I kind of like, you know, kind of demand their attention. These preseason meetings are important. But the chalk it and talk it is what we do first so that they understand the mentality of what we're trying to do, where we're trying to get double teams, what we're trying to do to this kid, why we don't block the defensive end because old kids are always like, well, coach, why, why would we not block that defensive end? Because we're going to kick him out. And then the, you go through those questions and that's the, the stuff you work out in the chalk it and talk it phase. Now, the walk it, jog it, and run it, you could also do some of that. You can't run it. I mean, mm. but in preseason, you could probably get the walk it and jog it in some of these preseason practices, kind of put them in formation, go over alignment before assignment, make them line up right. And then, um, you know, you can jog through some plays. Um, now, when you get to the run it phase, now, well, actually before, let me just back up. So when you're jogging, now you're always going to jog on air until basic fundamentals of the play are worked out. Stuff like the toss, make sure that the toss is not, um, you know, that your, your quarterback is basically, um, you know, the footwork is being carried out. The timing is good. The motion looks the same on each side, like just the little things about the play. Okay, so I do my run it phase in two phases. I do it on air. Once we get to the run it stage of installing these plays, I do it on air full speed. No defense, because there's no point in, in having a defense. Um, when, we're do, when we're running on air full speed, and again, people know about my circle drill. A lot of my coaches that have my manual, they've asked me about the circle drill. That's basically doing uh, on air full speed only without the line. And then they're facing each other. You just got two centers facing each other and two offenses facing each other. And they just go in circles because one guy will go in motion on, on one side and then the other guy is running the same play on the on the facing offense. So they're running like this at the same time. And you can just get a lot of reps. Team one offense is facing team two offense, whatever. Okay, so you have like mm, four, how, how many skilled position players are there? I don't, four, there's four. Okay, so you have four dudes getting reps on motion and toss and what the backfield action looks like. Um... But on air full speed, I look for the QB spin and toss in the hole and not running it, not running into the backfield. Okay. That guys is a double wing killer. So when you're installing your power plays, um, that the footwork of that toss has to be on point. Okay. Cause again, double wing is not a slow offense. It's high speed. That toss cannot take a lot of time. If you watch my teams that are running toss, as soon as the ball is snapped, dude is pivoting in the hole. Okay because you're supposed to spin and toss in the hole. Um, reference my video here on my YouTube called the toe line footwork. It's like down, a, I filmed it a long time ago, but it's pretty critical. Your quarterback has to spin in the hole, in place. All the double wing teams that you see where the quarterback runs into the backfield and then tosses it, it's usually the younger kids because they just can't get that footwork down or it's just not coached, but they run into the backfield and the timing gets all messed up because the quarterback cannot get his hips around fast enough before the, the three back either runs into him or slows down for him to turn around. And then all of a sudden you get all this penetration that cannot happen. Um, so I look at things like that. Um, once we are done with on air full speed and I feel that all the plays are like, you know, pretty good to go. We go to the, um, the on air three Kings 
kind of like the phase, okay? I call this phase three kings, and I'm just gonna do a little whiteboard work to kind of finish the video out and kind of explain three kings to you and um, hope that it improves your like practice ability and the ability to execute plays in the double wing. Check it out. All right, let's get right straight into it. All right, man, so as you can see, man, I, um, <clears throat> the three kings drill is a drill that I do, man, when I start installing plays. Basically, it's just a philosophy kind of like I feel that there's three critical players on defense for every play that if you execute your assignment on these three players specifically, you're going to be able to get the four yards per carry that you're going to need. Like all these other players that I haven't that I haven't drawn out yet, that I'm not going to draw out because they're not part of the three kings. The three kings is a drill that I use when I'm installing plays because I feel that to, for me to run Ray 34 power, which is our base play from UC double wing, I feel that to run Ray 34 power, the way I block these kids that are in the defensive triangle and where they're aligned and how my kids are able to respond to where they are aligned based on their rules, because again, this is play side, this is two, four, six, okay? We're gonna run power so my fullback knows we're gonna kick out. They all have their rules down the line. This is my at man, okay? This guy's blocking GDB, this guy's blocking FBI. My wing, he knows to avoid the end because FBI, first backer inside, that is not a backer. And he understands that. These are the drills we go over. These are the things we discuss when we're talking it and chalking it long before we get into the three kings drill. But what I do with the three kings drill is I just basically rotate three kids in at these at these positions i'll have a bunch of kids over here waiting to just run three kings and i run them three on 11. so ray 34 power will go something like this this kid's blocking good so he knows he knows he's got a he's nobody in his gap he's got an on block and i ask him why are you block that kid it's because coach i got an on block this kid's blocking gdb gap no down yes boom double team right here okay this guy's blocking FBI, so he's going to let the end just kind of like, you know, shade in right here. He's going to go around, boom, pick up this backer. Fullback's going to come out here, boom, kick out. This guy's going to come in motion, quarterback spins in the hole, gets the toss, okay? And there's just offensive linemen. These guys are just going to, he knows that there's a double, okay? They're just going to huddle up together, kind of run this off. Your guys are gonna pull, get up to the second level, run in here, boom, fast inside reach, okay? But they're just carrying out their assignments, all right? Against three people, learning how to run in traffic. The toss happens here, quarterback gets up in the scrum, goes out to cornerback, backer, wherever. But you run it against three people. And the reason you run it against three people is because these people are the three kings, that if you take care of these three people, you're gonna get four yards per carry, okay? Period. And then you're getting reps for your entire offense. They're not necessarily on air, but they're running against the three kings. They're running against the three most important chess pieces to picking up yardage. Okay? Now I'll go into counter. All right, so now I got plotted out on the screen, Ray 25 counter. So, um, you know, once we get power worked out and that stuff's running, we get into the three kings of counter. Okay? And what I generally will do is, again, the three kings of counter are, are still, again, this end this tackle and I've got this magnet here as my linebacker because what we'll do is we'll run it like this a few times and then what I'll do is I'll just kind of be I'll have my backer sometimes do this I'll bring him down here into the a gap and just have him stand next to the tackle okay just do some different things all right and then I'll kind of watch the play and and see how it develops and see what happens the one thing sometimes that this happens the center all of a sudden thinks that this is his block when he should know that he's man on or man away from the play, okay? So if I see him all of a sudden look to his left and block this kid, it's a, it's, it's, I'm gonna call timeout or when they come back to the huddle, I'm gonna say, hey, why did you do that, center? Oh, because, oh, because I saw him step in my gap. That's not your gap, man. You're blocking man on, man away. Then I'll ask my, my guard, like, hey, what did you do? Well, coach, as soon as I saw him step to the line, uh, he's in my gap, so I'm blocking God. So I blocked him, and I'm like, all right, good job, Billy. I'm like, tackle, what did you do? Well, I'm, I'm the good, I'm blocking good because I'm the at man, because I'm the five man. 
So I blocked, uh, I didn't know it was in my gap, so I blocked on block. All right, what'd you do? GDB, gap down backer. So I came here and I doubled on this kid, okay? This guy's going in motion, so he doesn't matter because it's a counter, okay? N comes in, comes in off the double team, okay? But we're running again, we're running again, 11 man onto the three kings. My On all counter plays, my backside guard has the kick out. Boom, okay? Fullback's coming, bucket stepping. Quarterback's gonna come like this. Fullback's gonna release as soon as the guard passes his face. He's gonna come through the line, boom, lead blocking, okay? This guy's gonna do a, a, a slight kind of open step. Backs, oh, I'm sorry. Fast inside reach, gate puller. Boom, he comes inside out. Opens up, bucket step, slight hesitation, comes down the pipe, okay? Blocking versus three kings, all right? But I, what I do is I change, I kind of change the configuration of the backer and we just, uh, we just use his movement. If he's up here, okay? If he's up here, then he's gonna be unblocked, okay? So depending on what he does, my kids need to be watching. If this guy goes to his double team, okay, this guard right here, if he goes to his double team with this kid and links up with him, and then, <laughs> sorry, my magnet malfunction. All of a sudden, he sees this linebacker, this three kings guy, just blitzing this gap, okay? He has to understand he has an eyes inside concept. He needs to come off this double team and pick up his, his pick up that gap, okay? Gap consciousness is always part of the game, all right? So you can't let him blitz that A gap. So I use the three kings to, to basically go over coaching points of all of these different plays. And the three kings aren't always the same people or positions. Okay, so next I'll go over uh, a little bit with wedge. Okay, so actually let me just keep it rolling. I'll just kind of draw it out on how I do three kings with wedge because it's really simple. I get in there, we'll get wedge working. Wedge is moving. Everything's great. Okay, wedge fit. We've been doing wedge compression drills, which I talk about in my manual. I also, you know, talk about, oh, sorry. I always bear, bowl offset my, uh, uh, my fullback for wedge. But what I'll do is I'll just put the three kings, I'll just put the, my biggest kid in there. And I'll just line, line them up like this. Okay? Three kings on air versus the wedge. Like, give me some resistance, fellas. I mean, this could be tackle, nose, tackle. Or this could be, you know, you guys talk about double A gappers. You could always remove this. And now you just have, like, a backer and a backer, like, right in here in the A gaps. Okay? And then maybe have, like, I don't know, another backer up here whatever but just put them in front of them because you want the wedge to get used to just blasting kids out of the way all right so now let's talk about another critical one um and that's the trojan sweep okay because that's another one where three kings is super important because if you want your sweep to go hard and go heavy every time you call it you have to run uh you have to run your trojan sweep versus three kings all right last but not least your three kings, um, the 27 and 36 Trojan versus the three kings. Like I said, this is how I teach all my plays. Come in with three kings. Now, as you can see, the three kings have changed. So now it's an end, uh, a defensive tackle, and a cornerback, okay? And where he can be, you know, you can bring him up here. It, it's fine. It really doesn't matter. But again, when you're running the 27 Trojan or the 36 Trojan against three kings, you should try to put these kids and coach these kids up to just be in a standard configuration and just do standard defensive things, okay? We'll get to how I use this as a drill in a minute, but for now, it helps your offense out by having these kids respond like normal defensive tackles ends. Like, don't be some practice warrior and, like, do, <laughs> do some stuff like run around here. Like, no, just have them doing basic defensive responses to how they would come out and play their position just play your position okay so the 27 trojan specifically now 27 trojan if you're running my system this is my two back this is obviously my seven man but i want to point out something with both trojans 27 or 36 trojan there is no good god it is a special blocking rule just for trojan and i if i don't i will probably say it 500 times during a season for Trojans, if to my kids, if you're not pulling, you are cutting. 
okay? So everyone on this play that is a puller knows that they are going to pull. And everybody that is not pulling is going to cut. Now, when I say cut, I teach my kids to just basically go down and make a coffee table lateral to the hole. Basically like get on your hands and knees and arch your back up and make it hard for somebody to jump over you. I don't have them go straight into kneecaps, none of that stuff. But when I'm running 27 Trojans, specifically what I want to what, what I want to kind of train you guys up on is that the the tight end is always responsible for the reach block on the defensive end. Whether it be 27 Trojan, which this is 27 Trojan, I will show you 36 Trojan in a second. But the defensive end is responsible for this reach block, okay? Right here, he tries to get outside of this guy, okay? Now, in my system and the way I block it is that my three back, who is now here, he has responsibility for eyes on the tight end to, to make sure that he has this reach block handled, okay? If he does not, okay, if he does, or, or based out of alignment, okay, if he can't get all the way there, like let's say that the end was a little bit wider and he, he tried coming out and, and end was not having it, the three back is immediately going to watch this block happen. And if he sees any bit of the defensive ends outside shoulder peeking outside, he comes right down to help that happen. He, he just seals the defensive end off. Because I'm not really worried about this kid because I'm bringing everybody. There will be a cut block right here and then everybody is coming deep to pull, okay? Everybody, the guards are going. He's gonna make a big coffee table right here. The gate, uh, I'm sorry, the fullback is streaming out. The gate puller is streaming out here, okay? I don't care about this. We run three kings to make sure that this that this configuration happens right here. Now, I got a little bit too far with all these all these drawings. Now, watch this. <clears throat> the three back was right here. Now, if the end is tight, right? See, he's tight to the line of scrimmage. And that's why I would run a Trojan, because I see this kid is trying to just, you know chase my end or do something crazy so he tightens up now if the defensive end is able to easily step outside him and just and just crush him to the inside then the three back just checks right to the corner okay and walls him off now if you're gonna go the opposite way with this play okay which is fine got crazy with the pullers All right, so now we're here. Quarterback is here. Fullback is here. And we're going to run 36 Trojan, which is fine, okay? Now, my three kings, I'm going to move my three kings, okay? And we're going to run 36 Trojan against an end, a tackle, and a, and a, and a wide corner, but on the line of scrimmage, okay? Okay? Now, same idea, only now the two back and the three back have kind of changed responsibilities. So what happens here is that if, if, the, if the play side tight end, which is your six man, again, it's no good God, no special rules. If you're not pulling, you're cutting, and the tight ends know they have the reach block. He tries to get outside contain on this tight end, I mean on this defensive end. If he can't, the two back widens out and then makes sure he just walls dude off. And then once again, cut. This guy's coming right out here, pulling, pulling. This guy's coming here. Some coaches, I mean, some coaches like a handoff in front. I actually now am preferring him to turn and hand it off behind him because it allows the three back to maintain about four yards deep. Okay? And he just keeps his depth. All your pullers get nice and deep. Trojan pulls. Okay? Gate puller. Out. Okay? Again, your three kings, your tackle, your end, and your center. Now, again, I told you how do I make this a drill. 
later on in the season, I will basically use three kings as a drill. I'll move my three kings to make the line kind of adapt to like new three kings alignment. Like I'll basically, I'll put like, a, like the end, I'll like stack them. I'll just bring like tackle, tackle, tackle. I'll just line them up over the two, four, six man and try to run power. And then when we run it, if somebody messes up or there's not a, a visible double team that I can see and there's, I know there's a problem, uh, then we go over that. And I'll just ask the ask ask the players. Hey, it was a thirty four power. What's your rule, guard? A gap on down, coach. What's your rule, tackle? Gap on outside, gap down, coach. What's your rule, kingpin? Gap down backer, coach. What's your rule, wing? First backer inside, coach. And we just run it, okay? So again, running against three kings, man, can kind of simplify your offensive attack and just allow you to kind of focus on neutralizing the three most important defensive players on any play, you know, before you install a full running defense of 11 kids running around screaming, tackling each other, taking forever to unpile each other. This is just an efficient way to get reps and just neutralize the three most important defenders. I hope you enjoyed the, I hope you enjoyed the video today, man. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. See you later.